All right. I said shift. So today we are going to make a cube with a corner missing out of it. And this is going to be a constructed drawing using a ruler and a compass. So our first step is to create our construction lines. And to do that, we are going to first locate a center point somewhere near the center of the page. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but you want to put a little dot somewhere close to the center. After I have my center located, I'm going to pull up my compass, and I'm also going to pull up a ruler. I'm going to save the ruler for later. So what I'm going to do is I would like to create the largest circle possible without going off of the page. If your circle goes off of the page, that is a problem. So you are going to take your compass point. You're going to place it on your center point. Now, on my board, I'm going to have to sort of rotate around, make sure my point is in the right place. So I'm going to make a large circle. around my center point. And yes, you need to do that as well. So then, without allowing your compass to get larger or smaller, your compass has to stay at exactly the same measurement as you use for your circle. So do not let your compass get bigger or smaller. You are going to take your compass off the page, place it to the side, and then you're going to take your ruler and you're going to draw a line, a diameter really. You're going to draw a diameter from one edge of the paper uh, of the circle to the other. And make sure that your diameter goes through the center. So at this point, your paper should look like this. It doesn't really particularly matter where your diameter is because you can turn the paper and the diameter move around. Now, for those people at home who can't see me moving a piece of paper with a circle and a diameter around, you will imagine it. So our next step, our next step, you're going to take your compass and you're going to be very, very careful to make sure that your compass setting has not changed. You're going to place the point of your compass, the metal sharp point that you're not going to stab your neighbor with, <laughs> at the intersection of your diameter and your circle. So, and y you'll know you're right when, okay, so my point is in the right place, you see it. And you know, and so obviously the, now the um, lead part of the pencil should be at the center. Don't make a line there. I'm going to rotate my pencil so that it's close to the edge of the circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an arc so that it intersects the circle. I'm going to make two arcs, in fact. I'm going to swing my pencil around and make a second arc here so that I have two arcs that intersect the circle. Then, again, making sure that my pencil does not, or sorry, that my compass does not change settings, I'm going to place the metal point at the intersection of the diameter and the circle. I'm going to have to rotate this so it doesn't go off the screen. And so I'm just going to double check to make sure I'm in the right place. It appears as though I am. And then you're going to make two more arcs 
on either side of your intersection of the diameter and the circle. And again, you do not want to let your compass point get larger or smaller. So right now your drawing should look like mine. Your compass measurement should be exactly where it was when you drew your circle at the start. Now we are going to make sure that you've done this correctly. There's a way to check that your drawing is accurate so far. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to place the metal point at the intersection of one of the arcs, doesn't matter which one, and the circle. I'm going to swing my compass around and hope, that's pretty close. Yep, that's about right. So your point of your pencil should exactly touch the intersection of your arc and your circle. And then I will try this again on the other side. So I'll bring my metal point around to the intersection of my arc and my circle. And I'm getting a little of the pixelation issue that I talked about. Swing it around and I'm awfully close. There we go. So my pencil point is right where my arc and my circle cross, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two more diameters. I'm going to create two more diameters. And to do that, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect two points of intersection. I'm going to connect where my arc and my circle intersect. And then I'm going to uh, connect that across the circle through the center because it's a diameter. And I'm going to connect it with this other point of intersection where an arc and the circle intersect. And I'm going to draw my diameter. So diagonal. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other two arcs. I'm going to put my ruler on the point of intersection. I'm going to make sure it goes through the center and the other arc where it meets the circle. And I'm, I'm working on a Promethean board, which is really you know, a nice tool. But unfortunately, I'm stuck with having my ruler on a certain pixels. And so sometimes my drawing isn't quite as perfect as I, I would like. So I'm going to draw my diameter. And you know that you are doing things correctly if all three of your diameters meet at one point, and that would be the center point. If you end up with a drawing where you have your first, your second, and your third diameters, and you have a little triangle in the middle, that is a sign that you've done something wrong and you're going to have to start over again. If you have this little triangle in the center, you're not paying close enough attention to detail and you will have to start over again. Okay. Oops, I want to go back. All right. So now we are going to make a a hexagon. And I'm going to make this hexagon by connecting all of the points where the diameter meets the circle. So that may not sound too good, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect this point of intersection here. Hopefully I can actually get the ruler there. And I'm going to connect it with this point of intersection here. That didn't look right. So here we go. And your construction lines should remain somewhat light. So then I'm going to connect the other ones as well.
And then I'm going to connect my last point of intersection. There is no need for you to be obnoxious about this. Please follow along. So now we have our hexagon. And oh, I forgot the top one, sorry. And now the next step is we are going to connect every vertice of our hexagon with every other vertice. So in other words, I need to connect these two points of intersection. And again, you need these lines to be light. So there's one. Here's another one. And you'll connect all of these points. The purple points? Oh my goodness. Uh, John will have the pleasure of doing this as well. There are a lot of lines, sir. So I'm having some issues with the uh, my ruler not wanting to to uh, connect two points. So I'm I, I'm gonna have to use a slight cheating method on here. You don't have this issue. So I can just do this. Okay. So now we have this. We have this con, um, set of construction lines. And so we have done all of our construction lines. The next step is going to be how to create the drawing. So part two will be how to create the actual drawing with this set of construction lines. <coughs>